These days, Bob's Burgers is one of the biggest and most popular adult cartoons, and with good reason. The cast of wacky characters and their relatable adventures keep people coming back episode after episode. Please don't ask us to help. Please don't ask us to help. But what if I told you that there were some downright freaky theories about this household comedy that will blow your mind? Because that's what we're exploring today. We should get going, Hugo. Who are you going to harass next? What's going on? I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and these are crazy Bob Burgers theories that change everything. Let's get started. Eat the burger! Each Bob's Burgers episode takes place in a different universe. Anyone watching this video is already well acquainted with the opening sequence to Bob's Burgers, showing tragedy before the restaurant time and time again, from rat infestations to fire damage, really sets the mood for the show. What's well, a Bernie? However, observant fans will have also noticed that the intro is a little different each time. Specifically, the Exterminator van shows a different company name with each intro. One shows the tongue-in-cheek pun, no more Mr. My Sky, while another shows, rats all, folks. But what if this is deeper than just an attempt to use every rodent pun known to man? That's crazy. You just carry around bags of rat turds in your pocket? A theory by Reddit user Psychopathic Tree is that this proves each episode of Bob's Burgers takes place in a different universe where they called a different exterminator. Oh god, don't come here. No, 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 no. Welcome! The theory says that the Bob's Burgers timeline splits at the exact point where the family calls any one of the multitude of exterminators. Each episode, therefore, is the direct result of having called that exterminator. It irrevocably changes the course of the family's lives. You can think of it as an eerie twist on the butterfly effect, that even the smallest of decisions can make a huge impact on the world. It's definitely a weird thought. Don't make me go back in there! Jin, it's okay, it's okay, take a breath. What's under Louise's bunny cap? This one poses some food for thought. Louise's signature bunny cap has been a staple throughout the whole series. However, her reasons for wearing it are still a huge mystery to the fans. But Reddit user Tarek15 has a thought-provoking theory about why she's so attached to the hat. Well, without it, she looks just like her mother. She does! It's no surprise to anyone that Louise does not have the best relationship with Linda. Their mother-daughter bond has always been strained, and Louise, like many girls her age, seems to be harboring some resentment and frustration towards her mother. Mom, it's over. You ruined it, okay? Your mom did all up. Uh-oh. She has distaste for Linda's actions and associates making things boring with momming it up. In a flashback, she even refuses to call Linda mama as a baby. Louise would obviously resent being compared to her mother, and looking like a mini Linda would definitely frustrate her to some interesting fashion choices. It's possible that when she grows, matures a little, her bond with her mother might improve, and then she might lose the hat and appreciate their connection. What just freaking happened? Linda's alcoholism. Linda is shown to be fond of alcohol in many episodes, with wine and mixed drinks being her poison of choice. At a glance, there's nothing too alarming about her drinking habits. The theory Reddit user KingTut14 puts forward, however, suggests there's something darker to be read into it. The theory is quite sinister, in fact, and suggests that Linda's drinking is to blame for the initial fires that befell the business. The fire is alleged to have broken out due to her negligence. And furthermore, the theory claims she left her children behind afterwards. Huh? Huh? They go on to say that it's possible Tina froze in the pandemonium, and not helping Jean and Louise is the true reason behind their lack of respect for her as an older sibling. Bob may have ran back for the children, but not before Louise was burned, which may be a far darker reason behind her need to cover something up with that bunny hat. The theory gets more elaborate from then on, claiming that Bob and Linda lost custody for a while. She has to attend a therapy program, while Bob gets the run-of-the-mill office job he's shown working in a flashback episode. It's further claimed that not only was she drinking while pregnant with the children, but that she cheated on Bob with Jimmy Pesto. And Bob finding this out is the real reason for the animosity between them both. This is killing me! A lot of this theory is based in conjecture. It's far more likely, after all, that the fire was caused by the faulty fryer Bob complains about and eventually replaces. And there's no other signs that Linda's alcohol usage negatively affects her family. Ta-da! It's the spice rack! Get it? Rack? <laughs> However, it's not beyond the scope to imagine Linda as a high-functioning alcoholic who can maintain her life and family relationships while still being, sadly, dependent on the bottle. Either way, it makes for unhappy food for thought. Hold on. Mr. Fishoder might be an old god. Mr. Fishoder is Bob's landlord, an enigmatic and wealthy man. 
His attire, consisting of a white suit and eye patch, already kind of give him a creepy vibe. But what if there was something even more ominous about him? Oh, well done. That's the money shot. Reddit user Code Samurai suggests that, in fact, Mr. Fishoder is an old god who has lived in the town for hundreds of years as some sort of local deity. Possibly, he arrived with one of Leif Erikson's expeditions to Iceland and traveled south to Seymour's Bay, where Bob's Burgers is set. I enjoy you, Bob. Your mustache, it's fascinating. Thank you. Do you mind if I... Not much is known about the local history of Seymour's Bay, but appears to be a growing town with steadily increasing infrastructure, perhaps over the last 50 years or so. Perhaps the growth of this town gave the god a new lease on life, causing him to show his face once more. There are many odd things about Mr. Fish Odor that give this theory some credence. For starters, in Season 7, there's a gag where he begins stealing Bob's jack-o'-lanterns. When he's confronted about this, his response is, Stealing? No, I thought we had an understanding. You carve them and leave them out, and then I take them. It's like how people keep giving me bikes. Where do you want these bikes, Mr. Fish Order? Around the back, Freddy. At face value, this seems like a typical comedy quip. But people do leave offerings outside for their gods, and an expectant but perhaps outdated god could logically assume that anything left outside must be a gift in his honor. You have to admit, it's funny either way. Hello, Bob. I'm taking this jack-o'-lantern home to put with the others. Wait, you're the one who's been stealing my jack-o'-lanterns? Mr. Fish Odor is also notably missing an eye. This could be a shout-out to Norse mythology or specifically Odin. In the myths, Odin has his eye removed as a sacrifice so he could gain the knowledge of other worlds. Creepily enough, Mr. Fish Odor's eye is even said to be removed by his own brother. It's Who hooked out his it's brother's it's eye? It's, it's Felix! It's, it's Felix! Felix. Finally, he's known for dropping tidbits of wisdom. Some of these imply he has a different grasp of time. For example, in Season 1, he tells Bob, Roller coasters come and go, but Bob's are once in a lifetime. I admire you. Roller coasters come and go, but Bob's are once in a lifetime. Is it possible that he's met many Bob's over his lifetime, and each and every one has managed to surprise him? Bob's Burgers is about Bob coping with the death of his family. This theory is by far the darkest out of the list. What if the series is actually about Bob coping with the tragic loss of each member of his family? This nightmare's theory, originally proposed by Reddit user GearGirl five years ago, states that Bob opened the restaurant during a mental breakdown following Linda's tragic death, one he feels responsible for. This is actually why the restaurant is located next to the funeral home. Stricken with grief, he opened the restaurant and began to act as though Linda was still with him. The incident. And the children are dead too, thanks to each of the restaurant accidents. This makes sense mathematically, as the restaurant is on its fourth opening when the series starts. As you may remember, the accidents happen in the following order. 1. Fire. 2. Rats. And 3. Telephone pole. The fire kills Louise. Bob has already stated that he doesn't trust her with fire, which is why Tina is the grill cook. I totally get it. Gene is killed by the rats. While collecting and releasing the rats into the restaurant as a joke, he's bitten and dies from the infection. And finally, Tina is electrocuted to death when the telephone pole crashes through the window. The first three episodes, in fact, support the theory that Bob is in some way unstable. In episode one, Hugo tries to have the restaurant shut down with the accusation that it's serving human flesh. Don't tell me how to do my job. I don't tell you how to grill your corpses. This is another example of how Bob deals with death, and also arguably presents that Hugo blames Bob for Linda's death. I'd, I'd try it. In episode two, Bob spends several days in the false walls of the restaurant and is clearly unstable. In episode three, Bob uses Melissa the cow to help him move through the stages of grief, but this backfires when she's killed in a car accident. Bob hallucinates that he's in heaven with her at the end, showing that he does have a precedent for these vivid fantasies. Bob, I'm a castrated steer. Yeah, I'm a married man. <laughs> <laughs> Although some of this theory is far-fetched, Bob's Burgers wouldn't be the first cartoon to have a dark and sinister underbelly like this one. It's not unfeasible that the rest of the series is simply Bob slowly making his way through the grieving process and coming to terms with the death of his family. Regardless, this theory is definitely one of the more disturbing ones out there. I could have killed you. But what do you think? Do you have any crazy theories about Bob's Burgers? Do you think any of these make sense? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. But most importantly, stay wicked.